Okay, guys. <clears throat> Let's go into the direct uh, acting word, adrenergic antagonist. Because we just finished describing what? The indirect acting adrenergic word, antagonist, in the form of what? Sympathetic drugs, guys. You understand? So, right now, let's go into the direct acting adrenergic word, antagonist. <clears throat> okay, these drugs they what they bind to the receptors. But first of all, I think we should understand the difference between what antagonist and agonist. You understand? An antagonist is a drug that binds to the receptor first. They all have affinity for a particular receptor. But an antagonist does not stimulate the central part of the receptor. It simply means that what an antagonist has an affinity for a receptor, but it doesn't have an intrinsic act activity on that receptor. You understand? It binds, but it doesn't stimulate. While an agonist, it binds to that receptor and it stimulates what the the, the, what, the the central part of that receptor. You understand? And thereby what it has what an intrinsic activity. So we're talking about those pharmacological agents that bind to what adrenergic receptors. But they don't want stimulate those adrenergic receptors, guys. So right now, let's start with what the alpha. Of course, we know we have alpha adrenergic receptors, right? Of course, alpha adrenergic receptors. So first, if we say we have alpha adrenergic receptors, we have some pharmacological agents that are able to block both alpha one and alpha two adrenergic receptors, guys. So what we call those guys? We call them the non-selective alpha adrenergic blockers, right? The non-selective, that means they block both alpha 1, alpha 2, you understand? So uh, we have the non-selective adrenergic what? Alpha, uh, let's say alpha, sorry. Alpha adrenergic what? Uh, adrenergic blockers. Blockers. We have a lot of them, but at least you should be able to you know at least two of those drugs. First of all, we have what? Phenyl oxybenzamine. That's the first one. And the second one is what? Fentolamine, guys. Fentolamine. So <clears throat> these two, they are what? They are non-selective alpha adrenergic blockers. So if you ask yourself, what is the difference between this phenyloxybenzamine and what phentolamine? Now, this phenyloxybenzamine is a what? It's an irreversible what? Alpha adrenergic blockers, guys. What does it mean? It simply means that when it binds to those alpha adrenergic blockers, you understand? It does not what? Uh, it doesn't. It, do, it, it doesn't. It doesn't really. It doesn't. You, you can't, it doesn't dissociate, you understand? It does not dissociate from this one, uh, receptors, you understand? Even in the midst of high concentration of what we have been it cannot dissociate, guys. So, why, if this guy cannot dissociate from these receptors, it simply means that what? It is a non competitive, what? It's a non competitive, it's a non competitive, what? Adrenergic uh, alpha alpha adrenergic what uh, blockers guys. It's non competitive. Even in the presence of high concentration of norepinephrine, it cannot be displaced from these receptors, guys. That's what it means. And what can I even ask yourself? If a patient has been administered this particular pharmacological agent, you understand? Will he, will he or she ever recover from the action of this pharmacological agent? Of course, he or she will recover because you agree with me that what all the receptors in the body, after a certain period of time, they undergo what catalytic pathways. You understand? All receptors they are degraded after a particular certain period of time, and new receptors are synthesized. You understand? So this is one way in which this particular uh, uh, this particular a uh, patient can uh, you know free he or herself from this particular uh, pharmacological agent, guys. So what about this pentolamine? This guy here is a what is a re, it is it binds the receptor but in a reversible fashion, guys. You understand? It simply means that what this guy is a what is a competitive adrenergic alpha adrenergic blocker blockers, right? 
in the in the in the presence of high concentration of norepinephrine, this guy here, that's what the phentolamine can be displaced, guys. It can be displaced, you understand? And so <clears throat> it doesn't have a uh, much more uh, uh it, it doesn't have uh, let's say it, it binds for example in the presence of a high concentration of norepinephrine, it can be displaced and that led us to, to call this guy as a competitive what alpha and hedgehog blockers you understand so now this this is now what the non-selective alpha agridegic blockers so first let's let's have a slight recap first guys we've discussed about what different uh the alpha agridegic blockers which i further divided into what the selective and non-selective for now this is the one the non-selective and the non-selective can be divided into two we have the competitive non-selective alpha adrenergic blockers and the non-competitive uh non the, the non-competitive non-selective alpha adrenergic blockers so talking about the competitive non-selective alpha adrenergic blockers the first thing that should come to your mind is what fentolamine dies and talking about the non-selective non-competitive alpha adrenergic blockers you have to think about what the field of oxybenzene you understand this is a non-selective alpha adrenergic blockers so what about the selective alpha adrenergic blockers guys so first <clears throat> we have let's say the alpha the selective alpha one what uh, alpha one what blockers so at least you should you should know at least two drops guys there are a lot of them but at least you should know two drops so we have first we have uh the prazosine and what terazosine guys terazosine terazosine so what is the difference between prazosine and terazosine the main difference between trazosine and uh, and, uh, and terazosine is that what prazosine has a very short half life, guys. This guy has a very short half life, while terazosine has a very long half life, guys. So how can you apply this particular knowledge clinically? It means for you to give prazosine to a patient, you have, this patient need to take prazosine at least twice a day. You understand? But if you can administer terazosine. You can give that you can give this drug at least once a day to a patient. You understand? So uh, and also terazosin gives it reduces what the side effect of uh, uh, of this anti uh, of this antihypertensive what, drugs. You understand? If you can administer this particular terazosin because it takes it once a day. You understand? Due to the fact that what this particular drug has a very long half life, guys. Okay, going into okay first the, the mechanism of both the selective. And both the, the, the non selective, you understand, is that they block what these alpha adrenergic blockers. But the selective, they are selective on which adrenergic blockers to block, you understand? To, but we have these two drugs that selectively what binds and inhibit the activity of what, the alpha 1 adrenergic blockers, guys. So let's dive into the what? The beta blockers. Let's dive into what the beta adrenergic what uh, blocking agents. So first of all, <clears throat> we have what we also have what the non-selective what beta blockers, guys. You understand? So this non-selective beta blockers means they block both beta one and beta two, guys. And a good example of a drug that blocks both beta 1 and beta 2 is what? Propranolol. Propa, pro what? Propranolol. Propranolol. It blocks both what? Beta 1 and beta 2. And then we have what? Beta. Now, <clears throat> this is the non selective what? Beta blockers, guys. So we have what? Selective beta 1 blocking agent. We have first, 
We have what? We have a uh, Athenian law, guys. There are a lot of drugs, but at least you should know Athenian law. And we have what? Metarinal law. Metarinal, met, metarinal, metarinal law, guys. These are the two what, selective what, beta 1 blocking agents. But for the beta 2 blocking agents, they actually they are not used clinically. You understand? Beta 2 blocking agents are not what, important what, clinically. So, uh, have you understood, uh, uh, have you understand this particular uh, uh, what, we antagonist? We will be made to understand that what, in this particular uh, pharmacological agent that are antagonistically, that act antagonistically toward sympathetic nervous system, you understand? We have what sympatholytics, those that act what presynaptically, you understand? And on the presynaptic mem presynaptic what, membrane, and we have those that act on what on the receptors, that's adrenergic antagonists, you understand? And we also have what sympatholytics, the sympatholytic we've discussed them, and we just finished discussing what the uh, the, the direct acting what adrenergic antagonist right now. So if you can be able to summarize everything right now, you may understand that what talking about what drugs that inhibit the activity of the sympathetic nervous system. You understand? You should you, you can say that we have what the sympatholytic drugs and then what the adrenergic what antagonist. Talking about the sympatholytics, you, you, your mind should hit the what the presynetic uh, the drugs that act on the presynetic membrane. In which in one or two way, either directly or indirectly, they reduce what the release of what no epinephrine. While on the uh, adrenergic antagonist, which is direct acting, they bind to these adrenergic receptors, but they don't stimulate those adrenergic receptors, guys. So let's have a look at it.